Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, it's Manuel Bedoy from Black Sands. I have some major news. Uh, we have just signed Macchiato Comics right here with Hotep. He's over here chilling. You know, uh, he's been working on this for, for a minute now. How long have you been working on uh, this comic series? Uh, since summer of 2018. All right. And I know your Kickstarter happened last year, right? Yeah, April of last year. Uh, before I get into all those details, I'm gonna give people a chance to go and uh, uh, get into the room before we really begin talking. But sure. uh, what I do want to say is, you know, you're the first one. You're the first one that's exclusively signed to uh, BSP, which is Black Sands Publishing, the app that we are developing. And uh, the cool thing about it is, first of all, you have dope anime. I, I, it's a manga that's uh, very much traditional, right? So it, it has that traditional feel to it, that um, that uh, high energy uh, power suit type um, right. experience, right? Uh, right. It, it, I wouldn't call it a shonen, right? Because the characters are older, right? They're not necessarily they're not little kids, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, it does have some, you know, family friendly feel to it. Doesn't doesn't feel too extreme, you know? It has that that really cool appeal that I think is uh, very good uh, for audiences, teens and above. And it's definitely something that we're gonna be pushing hard because it just has that, you know, more family friendly uh, uh, feel to it, you know? Even though I know there's some suggestive themes in there and stuff like that, <laughs> but right. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that when the, when the bridge comes. All right, yeah, we're really trying to target all ages. Um, so yeah, they're not too young, they're not too old either, and uh, there are some relatively mature themes, but nothing too uh, gratuitous. Yeah. So first things first, uh, most people know me, uh, Black Sands, but they don't really know you. So what I want you to do right now is just introduce yourself to our audience. Okay. Uh, my name is Hotep Anthony. I am 27. Um, I, uh, I'm a writer now, uh, but I went to school for finance. I got my degree at UCF, which is out here in Orlando, which is where I live currently. Um, so I, I work in the finance sector and I do business as my, as my day job. Um, but I just had an interest in writing. I started writing um, uh, movie scripts, actually, initially, just short films. I filmed one of them. It didn't turn out very well, but uh, you know, <laughs> it, was just, uh, it was a stepping stone from, from, from those short films. I kind of graduated into comics. Um, I wrote one comic before this, which is a short 20 page comic. Um, and I was working on another project as well. And then me and my partner, who's not on screen right now, but um, he's a colorist for uh, for our production. Mm -hmm. I met him, we've been childhood friends. I mean, I've known him since I was about uh, 16 years old, maybe earlier. Uh, we just had this idea for this project and we came together and uh, we decided to make it happen. And uh, here we are, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, now one thing uh, I, Am I getting feedback? Right. Yeah, I'm getting All feedback. Right. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, one thing that I've noticed from uh, from uh, your your stuff is that, you know, you also um, hired some some help um, overseas, right? Correct, yes. Our, uh, our main artist is actually stationed out in Indonesia. Okay, yeah. So So one thing that I always tell people, is you do not need to um, keep everything in house, right? The, the main thing you need to do as a creator is make sure that your quality is on point, that you meet your production schedules, right? And that you find reliable people. Once you get those things together, you can build and build and build. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> my auto will be going so smoothly that they'll be working on additional projects while still pumping out Macchiato comics as much as possible because now they're building their infrastructure, right? In order to, you know, just create content at a rapid rate. Uh, I, I've noticed that your Kickstarter started uh, last year. What, what month was that? Uh, April, March, I think. Yeah, so March, March. March, you funded your production. How much of the production was already done before that moment? How much of it was done? Uh, over the volume one, which is the Kickstarter, we actually had it done, um, let me say 80% done when the Kickstarter was launched. And then when it came in. Yeah, talking about was how much content was that? Oh, well, that was uh, three chapters. So, um, and that was about 110 pages. And oh. then also some catch pages. So about 120 pages in total. 
Okay, and you had already printed, I mean, you already drawn those and everything else and had them ready to go before that Kickstarter happened. Correct, yeah. All right, and now that, that um, a year later, not a year later, I'd say about half a year later, uh, where are we at now on the production? So we are about to finish up chapter nine. Um, so that's, we've done another six chapters. Um, uh, yeah, six chapters and then, a, and then a data book, which is like a compendium of the characters and things of that nature. Um, so we knocked out about six chapters in the last, well, six months. So we're doing about a chapter a month at this pace. Yeah, so that's really, really like high. Let me let me just deal with that right there, that echo. But uh, that's a really high pace, like real yeah. talk. Like that's a that's a freaking super fast uh, uh, rate, much faster than most of the people that I see out there. Right? Hell, it's even faster than us. Although we do do a lot of stuff. You know, right, you guys but, do a lot, <laughs> but but still, you know, that's a freaking incredible pace. It's one of the major things that I look at when I'm uh, signing people onto BSP is whether they can just pump out content, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, the people who pump out the most content are going to do the best in the application in the first place, you know. So, so you know, seeing updates, especially if you're doing an entire chapter every single month, right, that's going to be massive for our audience, right, and obviously better revenue for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, right now, you have your stuff on Webtoons, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. I, I was looking at that. You know, I just when I when I look at Webtoons, right, one thing that I think about them is just they make you do so much work before you ever get a piece of the pie. You know what I'm saying? It's like it it, it gets crazy. You know, uh, one of the things that we're directly competing with, with is Webtoons in order to basically take all of their black and brown creators. Right? <laughs> right, our application give them a much better deal right off the bat and then the growth of actually having an audience that's engaged with you and cares about your content you know i was featured on on webtoons a whole bunch of times right by uh, by their people but at the end of the day if they're not featuring me my project just basically just sits there you know what i'm saying and right. that's just too much power i think to, to their side on what they feel like liking and what they don't, right? Exactly. You don't really have a chance to reach your audience. You know, I was, I was looking at your stuff and I was like, well, this looks much better than most of the content that they're featuring, right? Uh, but, yeah. Right, but they're not gonna feature it because they don't, it's not a romance novel for girls, you know? So, so, exactly. <laughs> so you know, you know that's, that's just things that I've, I've observed from it, you know? Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of a pain in the butt to me, but uh, it's a good thing because since Webtoons are so fixed in their ways, we have a way to go and get into the market, carve our piece out, and not have any competition in it. And Webtoons is not going to go, even if we get like a million users, right? Yeah. Webtoons is not going to go, oh, man, I got to stop them. I got to build an algorithm that's going to be um, great for black and brown creators. They're not going to do that. You know, it's like they have their business is set in stone. They can't. Right. They change everything because of that. Comicsology ain't gonna do it. None of them will because at the end of the day, they have their 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 ways of doing business and it has nothing to do with us. You know, so we have one of those places where we just run with it. We can run as fast as we possibly can, and um, uh, and this production side, sign enough people who are professional. You know, get them the funds they need, get them whatever they need in order to go and uh, create content as fast as possible. And at the end of the day. The big play is that when Black Sands the animation comes out, right, and we have all these users on this app with all these things and stuff like that, we fucking break out and become one of uh, one of the top publishers in the nation, like overnight. You know what I'm saying? And then we have plenty of money to go and make any animations we feel like. You know, so right. that's the big play. You know, uh, we're 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 definitely um, putting Black Sands on a leash. And we're not selling it to anybody. Even if Netflix comes to us halfway through the production and says, hey, I want to do it, we're going to be like, nah, we got our own platform to drop it on. You know, right. and this just funnels people into the app. And then people like you, right, who might not necessarily have massive marketing um, power, right, just right. don't have marketing power like that, still gets all that trapped audience. They're like, they're like there. They're like, they got no other options. They're there now. And they're reading your stuff like, yo, this is dope too. I'm gonna go follow them on social media. I guarantee you, from the app, you're gonna get at least twenty thousand users in the first year who are following you on Instagram. I almost guarantee that. 
because we're building that into the platform. Was like they get they get they basically get free money for following people following creators on Instagram and Facebook, you know. So so trust me, people are going to be doing it and they're going to be doing it at a ridiculous pace. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, looking forward to that. You know, one of the things I uh, I know is my power and in influence, and that power is what I want to basically weaponize for creators because not everybody can be that that interesting mobile like mobile person who's online closing people out and reaching audiences and stuff like that everybody can't do that There's nothing wrong with that right all i care about is if you can create content that people give a damn about you know what i mean so right. you know this is this is our plan with our application and that's why we're doing it now um for you and your team because obviously you did talk to your partner as well before you decided to make this decision what was your thoughts on why you want to join us uh, well, pretty much exactly what you said. Uh, it's very obvious you guys not only have the marketing power, but also a very uh, loyal fan base um, and very loyal. Since it's so, I guess, uh, I guess specific might be the word, uh, unified uh, around a kind of central theme of supporting black and brown creators. Uh, from what I've seen, um, really this is among, I guess, all the platforms out there, you guys have the strongest um, uh, a fan base and most vocal as well, and we thought that was a we, that was just too good of an opportunity to pass up. Uh, we've been kind of following you guys for the last really year and a half as well. Uh, too. Oh, really? So we've seen the yeah because we uh, we saw your um, well we see we still see them actually on our personal Facebooks. Your uh, your Hollywood hates this uh, advertisement, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it was just one thing led to another. We followed the page. Uh, we we saw like your endorsements um, from the children's books um, from Michelle Obama. We we're like, oh, these guys are legit, and their fan base is also legit. Um, and so it was just kind of like a dream come true when you guys reached out to us. We were still we were just kind of kind of in shock in, in, in a little way. So, well, you know, like, uh, I don't really see am i clear okay yeah I, can hear you. yeah I was just wondering about that feedback but you know at the end of the day um i look at things like this so i can't see all the talent in the black community right i hope it runs into me i try to train instagram as much as possible to find new content for me because you can actually train instagram to do that you know but at the end of the day i don't get to see all the dope comic books out there right so sometimes i don't just i just don't see them until like like randomly sometimes people tag people in i think what happened was when i did my initial call last year uh people tagged you they tagged you and said hey you gotta check this guy out and then i saw it right and i was like okay i'm gonna go and and, and invite them to fill out the form and everything else you know what i'm saying but before mm -hmm. that, i had no clue you know and i think that's kind of sucks right that we just don't even have like a a, a database for for um creators to actually go and say like that'd be pretty dope if people would just like regardless if they were on bsp or not if they just simply like if we had a page where we could just say hey fill out your information over there put your your title on there uh, and, you know just so people know that your stuff exists you know what i mean because that that, mm -hmm. that really sucks when i don't know about the people out there who's really like doing stuff especially when it's professional you know i'm kind of a snob i tell people all the time i say I said, I'm shallow as hell when it comes to um, looking at content. I do not care about the storyline. I'm probably not going to read it, right? I'm probably not going to read it until much later in the game. But what I do care about is the quality of the production, right? Whether it's professional in certain ways, the the great the the big looks on how what they do, what they consider major scenes that they want to um, highlight, right? And these things are what customers make their decisions off of you know i'm always thinking about what the customer thinks so if i know that a customer will be like yo this is fire right here i don't even know what it is but i'm about to buy it right now right and they're gonna argue with nothing that's gonna be like i'm about to buy it i don't even know what it is but i'm gonna buy it uh that is extreme power and that is something that uh i feel that uh we definitely want to um have on our platform it's all about professionalism you know it's not about you know, stories are stories. We can always fix stories, right? I, I, we can just get, you know, help with writing. We can get help with editing, stuff like that. But we can't fix this professional team. We can't fix somebody who can't hit the deadlines. We can't fix quality. That kind of stuff is unfixable. You either have it or you don't, <laughs> you know? And, right. 
So that's what I look for. You know, that's why I chose you. That's why I'm going talking with other people, you know, and, you know, honestly, I think a lot of people that I'm going to be signing are more uh, uh, newer to the game as opposed to people who've done a lot of things, uh, mostly because uh, when people have, have been in this for a while, they have a lot of distrust, right? In other people, they just do, you know, uh, right. and, and so they don't want to sign up, right, and give you the digital rights, regardless of the offer. The offer could be fair as hell. It could be limited in scope. Like, you know, what yours is a one year exclusive. That's not a long ass time. People have been doing <laughs> for like 10 years, right? right. Got, got stuff on Comixology for three years and stuff like that. Made probably 500 bucks over three years, right? But still, <laughs> but still they're like, yo, I don't, I don't trust BSP for one year, right? So, you know, those people, we're, we're probably not going to get a lot of them. But what we are going to get is people like you, who are much newer to the game, right? Who um, simply wants to have the opportunity to rapidly increase their fan base. Oh, I go overnight, you know what I'm saying? And right. that's, that's what we're focusing on. You know, my goal is in 2022, right? So 2022, I want to have at least 20 creators, and I mean teams, right? Because I because y'all divvy up however the hell y'all divvy up. I don't know, but uh. You know, 20 creators, creative teams under me, they're all making at least 100000 a year. You know, oh. that's what I want. That's my plan. You know, so it's, a good it's point. not impossible. It's not impossible at all. You know, we make way more than that. So I can see why once I build this mechanism in order to to increase sales, in order to get customers, in order to reach audiences, right, that people won't get that cascade effect. And have their own businesses blown up, blow up. You know what I mean? So it's possible, you know. And that's my plan. So y'all can hold me, y'all can hold me to that, YouTubers, right? <laughs> and all the other people who follow me, you can hold me to that. That's my goal. Is because bottom line is, if they're making good money, they're not going anywhere. You know what I mean? They're not going anywhere. They're gonna keep making content on our platform. They know damn well that nobody else is gonna give them deals like that. Most of the people who assign with Dark Horse. Who are signed with major publishers don't make a hundred thousand a year. They just don't, you know. So, so there's ways that we're trying to do this that has a lot of monetization um, things that we're working on, right? Because we're trying to become a hundred million dollar company. You know, that's just the way it is. We're at five million right now. That's our valuation. Thanks a lot to my supporters out there, right? But we need to get to a hundred million. All right. So we're gonna do it, and we're gonna do it fast. <laughs> now, um, so. You got these nine chapters done, all right? Uh, BSP launches in December. How long do you? How many um, issues do you think you'll have out before then? And if we're talking webtoon episodes, how many is that? Ooh, by December, oh, it's only February now. Um, yeah, you got a lot of time. I would say a minimum of probably 15, 16, and that's ready for webtoons because it doesn't take. Once we draft the chapters and draw them and whatnot, it doesn't take that long to cut them into webtoon slices. So I would say at minimum 15 chapters um, okay. by then. And these are 15 webtoon episodes, right? One more time? And these are 15 webtoon episodes, right? Oh, well. Like formatted for webtoons, or is it more because it's chopped up? Because I know oh, it's more. I know right. page can go, I mean, I know for a fact. Most webtoon pages, I mean webtoon episodes, don't go more than eight to ten pages per episode. Like it's not going much longer than that because that's long as shit, right? When you put it, when you put it on a mobile um, uh, format. Uh, so then it'd be about maybe fifty or so, I think, webtoon pages, or uh, webtoon chapters. Well, you know that's always good to hear um, because that's a lot of content for people constantly getting new content and the thing is you know we have reward systems and stuff like that that happens with um with the creators we have our own forums we have everything else so you're gonna see a lot of people like coming onto yours because it's just so damn long right people <laughs> like people are gonna be like yo there's a lot of crap that's going on here. <laughs> right? yeah. and, and they're gonna be reading that stuff and you know we're gonna push in, we're gonna be pushing your content a lot to um to schools Right, because BSP is going to have its it's going to have a special um, like like system for licensing, right? Where schools can get the the application, you know, for for like a certain fee or whatever, right? 
And it's, you know, so high schools and stuff can really go and basically do whatever there. A lot of content won't be on there, right? Like the older content and stuff like that. But the content that is appropriate for teens and stuff like that, that'll be on there, right? Yours is definitely going to be in that in that space, right? And with 50 episodes, they're going to be like, it's exactly what I need, right? <laughs> now, there's, there might be some some uh, some uh, edits we might have to do to the, to the story or something just to censor it down a bit, right? But right. For, the, for the most part, nothing's really going to change. You know, I, I already looked at it, and it looks... You know, it doesn't look anywhere near what I've seen, right? People trying to push the edge and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. So let's go look at what he actually has, right, on um, on uh, their their webtoons page, right? And then um, after we're done with that, I am going to uh, take it to the comment section. I'm gonna let people ask their questions. All right. So people are gonna be asking questions. And if it goes to me, it goes to you. It doesn't matter. Remember, uh, this is Hotep Anthony. You guys see his name down there? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I know that's his name. So whenever you want to ask a question, just say, yo, Hotep. All right. So first, let's go look at this comic book. Uh, all right. So here we go. So this bad boy right here, uh, let's start off from the beginning, right? So first of all, this is kind of a hardcore uh, cover, right? As far as what's going on here, you know? <laughs> but uh, let's look at what we got here, right? So his first his first story, right? His first chapter in this is basically kind of like a, a glimpse of like the future or something, you know? A lot of comic books do this in order to get, um, capture the attention of the audience, right? And I think he did this like close to a year and a half ago, right? Right. Yeah, so this right here, this is this is his joint, right? Now he did it in webtoons format. So if you see, it's perfectly optimized for a mobile uh, phone, right? It might be a little weird on our screen, but when you look at it on a mobile phone, it looks freaking perfect. It's exact size to the to the, to the thing. You can read it clearly, right? And it you could tell just by looking at this right here that this is much higher quality than what what we're normally used to seeing, right? On, on in like these kind of stories, right? It's just it's just much better than uh, than what I've seen so far out there from other competitors and stuff like that. It's one of the reasons why I decided to sign it was just because of how wild and energetic the story was. And much later on, you got you start seeing the character development of the main characters, especially the main character, where he's like a detective who's a real like uh, wise ass, you know. But I like him; he's funny as hell. You know, <laughs> and, and he's just a perfect main character. He's somebody who's like not really uh like like he's not a clown, but but the dude like gets himself into trouble. He's not somebody who's like a really good detective. You know, he's he's kind of trolling most of the time. And, you know, the first episode is just showing you what could happen in the future of the show. I mean, of the of the series. Uh, and. I just was impressed, you know. This is the kind of stuff that I love seeing, you know. And there's a lot of different types of characters, different backgrounds, everything else, right? Uh, what I've noticed from this series is um, because they were at a certain level at the beginning, right, their art necessarily wasn't, like, the best at this moment, right? But as I see the new episodes, they get significantly, like, like, like cleaner and stuff over time from what I saw, you know. So right. let me show you um, what, what I'm talking about. So as we're going through this, and I'll go to where the main stuff happens, right? So, oh, and by the way, the reason why it might look a little um, blurry is just because this is intended to be on mobile, all right? So they have a much smaller, they have much smaller um, files than what they would normally put up for HD, right? So on a desktop, it looks a little blurry. On a mobile, it's freaking HD. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so you have to understand that's that's kind of how they work, and that's how we're gonna be working as well because we don't want to blow people's phones up with too much data. You know what I mean? Right. And you see them right here. Like this stuff kills me, man. Like I'm not gonna go through this and let you guys read it, but the bottom line is, this this comic right here gets funny as hell real quick because this guy's a jerk. Like this. <laughs> Guy is like he's a he's a he's a, a detective with a real bad attitude, 
you know, and, and I guess he gets his superpowers and it just goes crazy from there, you know, but this guy's always been getting into fights. You know, he's, he's one of those, like, um, basically like a Keanu Reeves detective, you know, like, I'm just gonna break all the rules. I don't give a shit what the rules are. Right. Um, I'm just going to get the job done, type, type guy. And, and I believe the background of him is he's um, half black and what, what is, what do you mix with? Uh, so he's black and then his mother is Dominican. Um, okay. So, really just Dominican. Yeah. so basically he's just a, a, a black Dominican dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel, I feel that, you know, you said he was mixed, man. That ain't mixed. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, I, have, I have Dominican friends and they kind of run the gambit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but let me go. Let me go ahead and switch back to the thing. Let's go talk to everybody and let's let's have a good time. So wait one second. I just be right back and then I'm gonna handle this. All right, so uh, guys, uh, it's time for you to go and ask questions. Grill him. Don't feel free to ask ridiculous questions like what's his birth sign? I don't care. All right, <laughs> he said, but this is your time to ask as many questions as you would like. Uh, we're taking questions, and I'm going to start right after. Um, Make Love Beat. So Make Love Beat says comic looks amazing. So let's go. Anything past that point, I'm going to pull up your question on the bottom, and then we're going to go in and address that. And don't worry, we have like a little bit of delay, something like that. As a waiting room, like your question, uh, let me just say um, thank you so much for joining us in the first place. Right, uh, this is a big thing for our production. Uh, we we just love the fact that you decide to take that leap of faith and actually join us. A lot of people don't like doing exclusive deals, you know. But right. uh, well, the honor is all mine. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. So let's see. Uh, what's the average cost per page when dealing with your artists? Okay, that's an interesting question. There you go. Um, so, uh, believe it or not, if you're <laughs> originally, this is before we even started and we were shopping around, uh, most people try to charge between 70 and like $125 per page, which uh, is unfeasible, especially when it's just me working. Um, and I'm using my own money to kind of produce this. So we were shopping around, and that's actually when we found our friend overseas in Indonesia. And because of how the uh, the conversion rates work, he's only charged he only charges about twenty five dollars per page, um, which made it a lot better, <laughs> a lot more manageable. So right yeah. now we're paying a bit more than that, but about twenty five dollars per page. That's still right. Right. Okay, so that's really good. You know, and obviously it's much better than what the quality of the, the work he's doing. He's really he's really like you know, like doing it doing it like a lot better. Than what that's I was right. 25 a page. I was like, I was like, I wouldn't have called that, you know. For, <laughs> oh, that's good. Like, yeah, that. 25 for a page right there. I would have been like that, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, so let's go to the next one. And that is just for line work, right? So that's that's pencils and inks. Right, and our colorist is part of the team, so he's in house. Yeah, he's a, he's a stakeholder, so he don't care, right? He's like he's a stakeholder. Right. All right. So let's see. Uh, how much are the contracts for writers and artists? Uh, I think that's for, I, I don't know if that's for you or for me, uh, but we're not really going to answer that one because that's kind of something that's on the, the back end. Let's just say I outbidded Comixology and Webtoons, which I did. So that's <laughs> so that's that's something I always do. I always make a fair deal because I want exclusives. I don't want people to be on my platform and theirs. You know, what I mean, so uh, that's how I do it. Everything's different. I really I really base my bids based off of content, how much content they have. Right. So you see, he has a lot of content, so he gets more than what, what I would offer somebody who has like two or three chapters. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, and also, um, on top of that, uh, we will be supporting any of his Kickstarters. Me personally, I think you should launch a Kickstarter within the next month, right? <laughs> just throw it up there. Just throw, just throw it up there. Put like two thousand dollars in it. Uh, I mean, like, put the goal to be like two thousand uh, dollars, or you, you can have us do it. We got no problem doing the Kickstarter ourselves, right? And um, we're just gonna get you the funds you need to just pump out as much content as you can. So that we could have a much better launch for your uh, your content on our application. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, right. you got 1,500 investors, right? And their their stock goes up. You know, the more content we have on launch, so they have right. no problem supporting that Kickstarter because it's like they're putting money into themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's right. Thing, right? Okay, I'll work on that. Let's go up to uh, both of you to ever going to work together. For both of you, oh, let me read this one on here. Okay, for both, are you two ever going to work together to make a different style of comic or a short anime? Uh, it really depends on the workload, right? I, I like your color, your colors, right? So I do like your colors. Uh, I might use him for something. I don't know. You know, he that. Not, he's not like slammed, right? I don't see a reason why I wouldn't use a colorist like that. I don't really use too many colorists. I don't have them, but I do have a lot of mangas working right now that are in production for my own stuff, right? That's going to be on BSP as well and everything else. So I don't see why I can't like compartmentalize people that I sign who are not at full capacity yet, right? And get them in, you know, to work on some properties that we have, right? That's obviously a completely different thing. Those are paid gigs. And with as far as the short animes are concerned, animations is kind of like the cool perks that we have because we have our own studio. Uh, we don't know what's going to hit and what's not, but if there's interest from investors for a certain property to be developed into a pilot, we're going to build it because we can. We got we got the guy Turnus. Turnus can fucking he can build entire teams. He can build entire teams by himself and not, and just set it. Say okay, this is the team for this. And walk away, and it'll be done in like two or three months. You know, <laughs> the five to ten minute pilot, just like that, at, at the highest possible um, production level. So, so that's that's our power. You know, uh, later on, once people see the Black Sands pilot and everything else, they're gonna be like, okay, maybe we could develop other properties that we feel might hit in the market. So we don't know who's that's gonna be. We just know that it's gonna be our properties. You know, the people on our platform and everything else. Uh, okay, let's go for, um, okay, that's yours right there. So what was your earliest character you imagined, and is the character now reality? Uh, yes, so there's a character uh, named Dante in the uh, no comic. He's actually the first character seen, uh, first character with the, with the spoken dialogue as well. Um, and yeah, he is now a reality. He's uh, He's just a telekinetic. That's his superpower. He has telekinesis, and uh, he's uh, he's a rich billionaire, and uh, he runs this like the major company in the in the main city of where the comic takes place. Um, so yeah, he was the first character that I thought of. My partner thought of another character. Her name is Roxy, who's also in the comic now as well. Um, and we just kind of took it from there. All the other characters kind of came um, after them. Actually, the main character ended up coming last. He was the last person we thought of. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no wrong. Too funny. Uh, do y'all hear that? Who's that? Okay, the echo's gone. No, sometimes the echo comes in and muffles all my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Next one. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, will you BSP be breaking into internet games using graphics and things for from the creators? Uh, yes, we will. Exact time, no freaking clue. But there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to. We have a lot of assets that will be be able to be used in multiple different ways. We also have a lot of interested parties who constantly um, contact us. You know, me personally, if we have a really diverse list of, of comics and stuff on our platform, I have no reason why we can't develop a game similar to, um, what was it, uh, Marvel Future Fight or something like that, where it's basically like a six-on-six -six arena game where you have all these characters that you're rolling for, and we actually get the characters from the comics and stuff, put them all into the thing with synergies. It would be kind of crazy, you know, but at the same time, 
Like it's not that hard to develop, right? Because the rules of the game is very, you know, st structured, right? But it's a really cool collector thing with a whole bunch of freaking black IPs. So that's something that I think would be awesome. Uh, I also talked with, um, well, I talked to one of my people that you know already. I know you guys know him. I talked to him before here, um, and uh, he's develop. He's working on something right now for us for a card game, right? There's no reason why we can't have a Hearthstone, so we're going to make one, right? <laughs> I don't know when, but whatever. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next question. Do, 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 do. Oops. Let's skip the crap load of stuff. All right. All right. This is a, a question for me. Is there going to be a second investment round? Yes. Uh, well, there's two types of things for this investment round. First of all, if you have over, if you have over, ten thousand dollars or more that you're planning on investing in us in the next round right you can actually contact us directly because we're going to be doing a safe which is a simple agreement of uh future equity right uh, we're gonna do a safe for five hundred thousand dollars and we're gonna do that this year that is going to be uh basically the terms of that is going to be a 20 percent discount on the next round so if our next round valuation goes way up right which it will because we're gonna do what we're supposed to do. Um, you're gonna get a 20% discount on the stock price then, right? And those terms won't be available in that actual campaign. So people are gonna be paying regular price, you have paid 20% less, you know what I mean? Uh, that's for people who wanna invest early, right? Who wanna get that discount, right? And who wanna guarantee to get in, because a lot of you guys didn't get in. We had like 300 investors who came after we already reached our goal, right? And a lot of them didn't make it in because people didn't drop their pledges or whatever, right? They all paid their stuff. And basically, the other people are going to get um, refunded because they didn't get stock. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it sucks, but our campaign moved really fast. We raised the money in like three weeks. So people didn't really have a chance to, to go and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to get that next month for the next paycheck. It was like, it's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so next year when we do it again, it's going to be over really fast again, especially after the damn animation comes out. Ain't nobody going to be arguing with us. They're going to be like, <laughs> they're going to be in there like, like nothing. So, so the way to secure that is if you're a big investor, talk to us now. If you're a smaller investor, uh, just get on our list. You can get on our list by becoming a patron, right? Or you can get on our list by um, uh, supporting all the various Kickstarters that we do. We're going to be contacting them just like we did this last investment round first exclusively before the campaign goes public so people can invest early. You know what I'm saying? Okay, next question. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, here's a good question for you. Oh, for me? Oh, okay. Uh, so how I initially promote my work? Um, it's a good question. I'm trying to remember. We've stuck to Instagram. Instagram's been our main uh, promotion. Um, and oh, I remember now. We uh, so we started at zero followers, um, and we would just post our stuff. But uh, the big thing we did is we would search the tags on Instagram, so like uh, anime or digital art, whatever, and we would leave uh, comments on people's photos, but comments that weren't you know like anyone can make, like something that showed that we actually paid attention to their art and that we thought it was impressive or something of that nature. Uh, so we just said, mm -hmm. hey, we like this. Um, and that's it. We didn't say come follow us back or anything like that. We just left kind comments on people's stuff. And uh, it kind of got the ball rolling. And once we got more into the production side and we're working on like uh, the actual books and things of that nature, uh, we actually had a friend kind of manage our Instagram account for us. And uh, they were able to grow it quite a bit for us. So, okay. that's so how did you uh, let go? Uh, okay. Yo, uh, man, what's going on? Hey, can you guys hear me? It's, can you check your mic? Just My mic? Oh. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to not get the echo in there. Oh, let me see. Is this any better at all? Hey, you can hear me? Yeah. Whoa, it's got bigger. Oh, it got bigger. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. So, guys, can you guys hear me clearly? Just let me know in the comments right now. Okay, so they're saying it's better. All right, so good. 
All right. So now that now that we're uh, back into the game here, uh, I'm gonna follow up this question that I see here about how I might have missed it. Right? Uh, when you promoted your work, how the heck did you get that Kickstarter to be successful? So, oh, for that, that was mostly uh, so about maybe. Um, I'd say maybe 60% of that was friends and family directly reaching out to them. Hmm. And then from above that, we uh, had someone promote our Kickstarter on Facebook. Uh, and that got us a few, like a lot of um, backers that we weren't expecting. Um, so yeah, someone just promoted it for us on like a few different websites. We found him on Fiverr actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, that's pretty cool. You know, uh, you had like a four thousand dollar goal, so it was it wasn't a small goal for the first Kickstarter ever. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah. You know, but, we would have reduced the goal. Um, yeah, but yeah, we got fortunate. All right, let's see what we got here. What's the next question? Uh, what inspired your creation of Macchiato Comics most? Uh, so <laughs> it probably be obvious, but it was Power Rangers. Uh, back in the day, that's like when I was like I don't know, whenever like, you know the original might have more from Power Rangers. I guess that was maybe 20 years ago at this point. Uh, I used to be obsessed with it. Um, but I actually saw an episode of it maybe five years ago, and I uh, realized it's actually not that good. Um, it's, like, <laughs> very, very they're very, they're, it's for children. Uh, so the idea was, what if we made Power Rangers good? So the central like, concept of um, you know different colors, different kids, different color kids, that's like the the summary of Power Rangers. We kind of wanted to take that and run with it and make it a bit more mature so that people could kind of relate to it in a modern setting. So, so basically, um, how we're going to promote this is, you know, um, Power Rangers for teens. <laughs> what I say? Oh, yeah. Power Rangers for teens, you know, that's what I was going to say that just so um, that's an easy way to go and plug it, right? People still fans of Power Rangers, right? But everybody knows it's just for kids. You know, right. so, so we need a little bit something more mature and black, right? <laughs> <laughs> All these black kids out here, they need their own damn heroes. All right, what's the next one? Let's see. Uh, uh, do you in favor of physical format? I guess it's a question for me since you are all digital anyway. Uh, uh, to walk back the digital media in favor of physical format. Actually, that's for you. Um, me, well, I don't know what he's going to be doing um, personally, but I want to go and speak on his behalf on this because technically he's with us right now with his digital content. So um, we have no problem guiding people on how to um, get into physicals, right? We obviously don't want to do issue by issue. There's no reason to. They have a massive amount of content right now. Uh, so uh, what I would advise is that he do a collective uh, graphic novel format, hardcover, because who gives a damn about soft cover? Just do a hardcover. You can get the price down significantly if you order enough um, books, you know? Um, but that right there will be very good for, for a, a, a big collection like that. Uh, we've had amazing success with our books. Um, and, you know, that's something that he'll have to decide on his own, right? Maybe he'll do it as a Kickstarter goal or something like that, like to have a physical book that's like a hardcover, right? And trust me, you can get the cost significantly down, you know, um, to the point where it's actually cheaper than a freaking floppy 32 page comic book right that you're printing on demand right you can get a freaking 100 page uh fully colored hardcover you know anthology done for like less than that you know so 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 we have the connections to do that and all that stuff hopefully you know i don't know if china's burning to the ground right now i hope not <laughs> you know, but, we do have contacts like that, and we're definitely going to be looking for certain creators who have enough content who can get that collection together, right? So we can sell them bad boys, right? People like buying those things. They're like freaking amazing. You know, you sit them on a the table. You don't have to worry about kids ripping your book apart because they're all library bound. You know, it's really good stuff. Let's see. All right, so we already know Power Rangers is one. What else? Uh, well, favorite, my favorite animes. So my three favorite animes are so number one is, well, I go back and forth on this, but it's Death Note, uh, which may be the best written thing of all time. I love Death Note. Um, my second favorite is a show called Q, which is actually about volleyball, um, but it's very character based, which is my favorite. I like uh, character based, character driven like stories. And then um, my 
last favorite is a show called Hunter Hunter, um, which is again, it's a very character-based um, anime. And it's very, uh, uh, I guess dark is, is the best way to put it. It looks, like, it looks like it could be a shonen, but it's really kind of a bit more mature. There's a lot of, uh, you know, death and things of that nature. Um, yeah, those okay. are, uh, One thing I noticed about this, uh, One thing I noticed about this is that uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's just the echo is kind of kicking my butt. But uh, one thing I noticed about that whole collection is it's so ridiculously wide. Like, what the hell? Like, there's no like. Obviously, you don't have a favorite genre because all three of those things are like freaking night and day from each other. You know, one's a volleyball uh, slice of life. The other one is a grim, uh, basically, uh, I don't even know what the hell you would call Death Note. It's fucking tragic. I'll just say it's <laughs> psychological thriller, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's psychological thriller. And then Hunter x Hunter is a shonen. Well, I say it's a scene in masquerading as a shonen. Well, you know, yeah. a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, adult themes in that show. But 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 they're all fucking different. They're completely different from each other, man. You got you got to narrow that down, man. Otherwise, we don't know we don't know what the hell you're gonna make in the future if if, if you got such a wide damn uh, thing, man. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. For the same prices and what month? I don't know what that question. Uh, oh, okay. So that's a, that's the follow up for the investment question. Uh, don't worry about that. That the, it's kind of pointless to, to even think about what the price is going to be and what the month is going to be. Price is always regulated on on our our hype. You know, if we win a whole bunch of awards, get 10 million views on our freaking pilot and stuff like that, we're going to ask for a ridiculous amount of money and we're going to get it, you know? So, so, so I, I'm just telling you right now, the price is pointless to talk about right now because it's all based on hype, you know? It could be reasonable. It could be absolutely ridiculous. Who knows? You know, that's why the early adapters, which are the people who invest in the last round, they're smiling their asses off right now because they know what they got themselves into. Their stock is going to rise exponentially, you know, as we grow. Uh, let's, let's see. Next. Uh, for Black Sands. All right. Creative Extraordinaire says, for Black Sands, will the app have a subscription model? Also, how are you going to measure interest for the different titles? Uh, well, we're gonna have a massive algorithm. I mean, we're gonna have a massive um, analytics system built in that users and creators can look at. So people will be able to see what stats are going on. Even the users, okay? So even users, like freaking random users can go in there and say, oh, right now, 60% of the users are looking at Shonen Jumps or whatever, right? So they, they'll literally be able to check that stuff uh, the creators can look at their own stats so they can see what they're doing, right? It's very important for that transparency for ad revenue share, right? And uh, we will have subscription models as well, but it's not something that's going to be focused, right? The app is free to, free to play. I say free to play, not free to use, because it has free to play models in it, all right? So there's a gotcha system. So people ain't going to just go in there and say, hey, I'm going to read the 50 episodes of, of, of uh, Macchiato Comics. What they're probably going to get is like three episodes right away, right, for free. And then the rest of the thing is going to be locked. And the more they engage on the app, so if they follow people on social media, if they comment on their on their chapters, if they leave reviews, right, if they read X amount of books or whatever, they get free rolls on our system. And in the system, if you happen to roll a Macchiato Comics, right, you'll unlock another chapter. You'll unlock another chapter instantly. Right. It helps. It helps keep people interested, because what happens is if I just gave you a whole list of comic books. Right. A lot of people would just not read 90 percent of them because they're choosing the one that they feel is the coolest one. And then that's it. But with this gotcha system, if you already used all your roles for the day and you saw these books that you just unlocked, the new chapters, you're going to read them things because that's your roles for today. You know, so you're like, hey, I might as well go and read it. You know, I got, you know, so so this is the way we're doing our system. There's gonna be a whole bunch of events happening in the game. I mean, in the in the platform, like maybe it's Mecha Day, right? Mecha Weekend, and all of a sudden you're gonna see like people who have like mechas or power suits or whatever are gonna be like, their their content's gonna be dropping like crazy, regardless of what tier they are. Right? We have tiers as well. So 
regardless of what tier they are, they're gonna freaking be dropping like crazy, you know. And and that's just the way we're gonna do it. It's what we're basically trying to do is not only make something like webtoons, right? But we're trying to do something that people on YouTube who basically stream nonstop their experience on like a free to play game, right? Where they're out there rolling and stuff, and you see them literally do like like 30 minute episode where they saved up X amount of credits to roll content. Right. And everybody's watching them. It's like a thousand subscribers watching them do these freaking videos. Right. And uh, we're going to be basically like promoting that people do stuff like that because it builds interest into people getting onto the platform. You know what I'm saying? It's going to look fucking epic. So you guys are going to love it, you know, and uh, but there is a subscription model, you know, that's for people who are like just love to subscribe to things. You know what I'm saying? We don't stop people from spending money, but they don't have to, you know. So that's our bottle. Let's see what we got here. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'm a huge video game. Uh, I'm a huge video game need a uh, fan. So I, I'm a huge video game fan. And I would love to see your representation in the world of historical adventures. Could this be a possibility? Well, Black Sands is a historical adventure. So if we do have a video game, we just fulfilled that need. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is Bohotep. Uh, what media game movie series would you make if money was no issue? Hmm, that's tough. Uh, so movie, a movie that I've always, my favorite movie is a movie called Chronicle. It's a, uh, it's a found footage film about kids who just happen to get superpowers. And it's very surprisingly dark and it's so good. Uh, it's very short too. Uh, so if I had just a limited amount of money, I think I'll do something in that vein of just about normal people, uh, encountering something life-changing and kind of filming in a way that makes it much more, I guess, uh, direct, more personal in that sense. If, uh, if money was an issue as far as a game, I would make a good Naruto game for once because it's been too long since we had one of those. <laughs> Let's see. Will Black Sands ever just publish books? Or are you guys going to strictly sign people who make comic animes? Uh, you talking about like regular uh, novels? Uh, probably that's what the question is. Novels, right? Uh, kind of like the the Asar novel is going to be a novel. You know, um, we used to have Sons in the Bureau. We got we asked that only because of contract disputes with the with the co co writer. Um, novels sell. They sell really good. They do. The only issue we have with that, right, is um, it's not directly in the business model, right? And because of that, we don't want to invest heavily in something that's not directly in the vertical integration we have for our company. With that being said, there is going to be a stretch goal on the app for BSP, right, for users. If we can get like 500,000 users on there, uh, we're going to um, add a new um, section of the app specifically for novels. You know what I'm saying? So that's us kind of invading the space of Kindle and all the other things and getting it more to black users. Most of the novels we're going to be focusing on is fantasy and sci-fi just because everything else is done by industry people anyway. And hardly any black and sci-fi exists. Um, fantasy and sci-fi. So we're going to be focusing on that. Also historical fictions and all that good stuff, right? But that's going to be after we have a massive audience already, right? We don't want to lead with that because there's a lot of extra programming we have to do and stuff like that. But there's no reason why we're not going to build that in a little later once we already have massive traction, all right? So novels will be in later, you know, not anytime soon. Let's see what we got here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What was that? Wait one second. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, 
How long does it take to complete a comic for upload? I guess that's you. Uh, so our our page our sorry our chapters rather so our full non webtoon chapters just like traditional, they're usually between uh, twenty four to twenty eight pages. Some are longer, some are shorter, uh, but none shorter than twenty. I think is actually our shortest chapter, and our longest chapter so far has been about fifty pages. Uh, so about twenty four pages takes about a month to do, and that's to get it draw drawn, colored, and lettered. Um, so that's a standard chapter. Okay. Sure. Uh, this is a good question. This is for people who actually are um, their original patrons at the fifteen dollars tier, which just ended this month. And yes, we will be sending issue six variant covers. Uh, we should be sending them tomorrow or something because they they're allegedly supposed to be here today. We'll see. Right, but I'm gonna check the, the mail room. But we have them, and we got them for the ver for the Kickstarter backers, the patrons, and the people who pre-ordered the variant six um, issue. So we're gonna be shipping that out pretty soon. Um, let's see, next one. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so uh, this is a question. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna let you do a yes or no. All right. I want to. I want to go too deep on this one. But is anybody's powers based on their faith? No. All right. Next question. Uh, <laughs> I just don't. I just don't go too deep on that. If it is, then you can go explain it. But if not, then that's it. You know. Uh, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Do, 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 do. I checked IG with my phone. Nice work. How do I do my comic book on my phone? And welcome to the team. Uh, well, technically, you can go to uh, Webtoons, right? But I might tell him. Um, Axe webtoons. So I don't. So I don't know. I don't know about that. You know. You know. I, he said we'll see. I just don't see a reason why we should build up the webtoons um, thing. We're gonna have it on uh, our patron, right? So people will be able to get it there, right? Along with all our other books. So I don't know. If you want to speed read through it tonight, go right ahead. It's still there. You know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, all right, so if we haven't received a shared document yet, does that mean we did not get in? Uh, not necessarily, because they've only processed about $380,000 worth of the campaign. There's still 100000 they haven't processed yet. People might be haven't sent their stuff in or haven't gone through. Who knows? Once everything's done and, and we process the entire amount, then you'll know that you uh, that, that you weren't, you didn't get in. So who knows? Uh, let's see. Okay, I've been I've been working on a book since I've been young, and your concept is along the lines of my concept. My question is, if I want to collaborate with, is that possible? The only thing I say to that is I do not like ideas. I hate ideas. I like people who produce stuff and have a team in place and everything else. So no matter the similarities and stuff like that, if people don't bring the production teams with them, right, and show that they can manage a production, because I ain't going to manage it. I got stuff to do myself, then I just I just can't see a path for that. Now, if you go and you build something, right, and you did it just like Kickstarter, you made like six pages or something, right? You made six pages, you have a team in place, right? And you're saying, hey, I want to put this on BSP. Can you help me, right? I might green light that and say, I'll help your Kickstarter, right? So you can jumpstart that, that production, right? As long as we have an exclusive agreement that it's going to go on BSP, Right. But that's about as far as I'm going to go with new ideas. If I see that it's already at the quality I expect productions to be right, then I'll support that growth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see anything else? Anything else? I'm only going to take a couple more questions and then I'm going to close it out because we're closing in on an hour. All right. Uh, uh, well, he says, how'd you find your illustrators? Go. Uh, I would recommend Fiverr. It's a, it's a website where you can find freelancers across the world. Um, yeah, you'll find a lot of good people on there. Uh, a lot of them may not speak English as well as you want them to, uh, but that's not a major barrier. You can work with that. So I would recommend Fiverr. And that's F-I-V-E-R-R, two R's. Got you, got you. Um, all right. What was, the full what was the cost of the full Black Sand instead of DVD? 70 bucks. Actually, 80 now because issue six is about to drop this week. So, 80 bucks for the entire series. 
Uh, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Last one, both of you, yeah, you do a story in the vein of something like Vinland Saga. Um, he might not. He hasn't shown that he has a lot of interest in, uh, in historical fictions. You know I will. I mean, Black Sands is close, you know. Uh, but it's not a scene in. It's a shonen. Uh, we have some productions in, in um, creation right now. We have the Andes and we have the Gold Standard, two scene in stories, right? And uh, we're gonna go from there. They're all historical fictions. I like historical fictions. That's my niche. So um, that's what I'm gonna be working with. Uh, let's see. Uh, no worries, uh this one right here what advice would you give to all upcoming artists and writers uh the advice is the same advice i just gave for the other guy who said he want to do collaborations right i always tell people bring a, a a full concept to the to the table right because people just don't have the manpower to deal with with brand new stuff you know we gotta we gotta assume that you're gonna be able to do the entire production yourself you know what i'm saying and if you can prove that you can keep a quality production and build the team yourself and be able to manage that, then we'll play support, right? And make sure that you have the resources to be able to pull it off, you know? But that has to be done first. You know, I see a lot of people with concepts and stuff. I got 17 comics ready to go. I just need somebody to make it. I'm like, huh? You know, so, 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 so it's just very important that, uh, that people, you know, come correct with all their stuff, right? Just think of when you're pitching Black Sands, think of exactly like Kickstarter. So if I was trying to raise $2,000 today on Kickstarter, what would I need? And you come at me with that. You know, <laughs> otherwise I can't I can't even even consider it because just we just don't have the manpower to deal with it. Um, so that's the last question for now. Let me say my last piece on this. So the reason why we signed Macchiato and the reason why we're going to be signing other people is because the patrons who have joined our patron at patreon.com slash black sands, those people have been uh, basically supporting us. They signed up for the investor tier. They have all our comic books unlocked, including comic books that are going to be coming out from Macchiato and other creators. And, you know, that's my gambling money. That's the money I have in order to distribute to people in order to lock them in for exclusives. A lot of people I want to lock in, but you know, I can't just dip into the production money that we just raised on WeFunder, right? Because that's for production. I have to make animated pilots and I have to make the BSP app. So our patron is where we're getting all these funds in order to basically be competitive, right? No one wants to give you exclusive rights to something based off your hype, right? And I, I don't think that's fair, personally. I, don't, I know I can muscle people into signing up with me if I felt like it, Right. But I don't think that's fair. I would never want to freaking have somebody muscling me into stuff. You know, I've seen that happen a lot of times before. And it's just not the right vibe that you want to have at a company. You want to have a fair offer so that people can feel like they're supposed to be there and not feeling like they got used. You know what I mean? So uh, that's what we're doing. I definitely want everybody here to um, to if you're not a patron yet, sign up. It doesn't cost much. Right, uh, it's it's twenty dollars a month. We're already giving you like close to forty dollars worth of content on day one. You know what I'm saying? And then we're gonna get all that new content, including all of our exclusive stuff and training videos, as the months go by. You're also gonna get beta access to the app once we start getting it prototyped. Right? You guys are gonna be in there. And finally, the credits that you put into that 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 um that platform, right? Patron. So let's say. Nine months from now, right? BSP launches, right? And we're gonna use a coin system like uh, the 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 comedic coin, right? Or maybe we'll do an Acon coin or something like that. I don't care, right? But we got some credit. We got some credits in the in the system that you're using for to buy content, right? Because nobody just uses money to buy stuff on apps. It's usually some old, some their own kind of currency. You're gonna get two times the amount of value that you already put. In our patron. So if you put in in the last year $150 or whatever, right? For every month you just pledged all the way up to the, to the launch of the thing, you would have $300 worth of credits to spend on whatever the hell you want in BSP. You know, that's on top of all the free content you're going to be getting in the platform and all the other access things and everything else. And the reason for that is very simple because I want to sign people like Macchiato Comics and I don't want to give them a shitty deal, right? I want to be, I want to be fair 
to our black creators so that they can actually make content right and feel and, and be dedicated to our growth together in this application so let me go and put that banner up for you guys uh so that is patreon.com uh right there so patreon.com slash black sands go over there sign up today and you'll be able to read his comics next month so we're going to launch his stuff on, on march 1st right uh and we're going to be other people too are getting signed up we are negotiating right now with other creators as well so you're going to see other announcements like this happening and it's an experience it's a movement we're all together in this right so this is what it's about, man. These kind of big things. You got any last words, bro? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Patreon.com slash Black Sands. Sign up today. Macchiato Comics coming March 1st. All the issues of Black Sands, Cosmic Girls, the first barrels already there already. Let's go, baby. We're out.